Yeah, it was you Secret know behind the Kardashian. <laughs> yeah, it's like we we called the we called the breakup two weeks before the breakup too. Like I was like, it's only a matter of time though that for real. Shit. Yeah, well, it, because it's, well, for the same reason, you know, women love you for the same reason why they dump you. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Carlos Hernandez, and we're here to discuss choosing um, and or not choosing to have a girlfriend. When you're ready for a relationship, why are women unhappier in relationships? Why we called him the Kardashian breakup? How we called the Kardashian breakup before that actually happened with, and how the signs are there all the time. That's um, right. Yeah. And plus, uh, also, we go over to Patreon to do a bonus episode. That's where we do all the bonus coverage over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Uh, after the regular show, if you want to go over to Patreon, we have listener mail and we answer all your questions. Uh, questions about uh, communication and maintaining your honesty. Uh, dating a girl when you have no job and also uh, dating a virgin. So all that stuff over there on Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Plus, uh, Dante and I also do uh, consultations. If you want to reach me for a consultation, you can email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com and uh, we can talk about rates and set up a, uh, a consultation to help you with all your relationship problems, uh, sex advice, love, love advice, life advice, anything. And Dante, if they want to reach you for your consultations, where do they go? So you can hit me at DanteNero.com, click on consult. Um, you can get consultations there. Don't forget to follow us on the Patreon, Patreon patreon.com slash manschool202 um, and also check us out on YouTube and all the rest of the stuff um, I love y'all man we in let's check it out let's get into it I'm not an alpha male I'm not a beta male either I'm just a better man better man well, put your happiness first cause if you don't they won't yo yo what's up y'all GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do the sexual revolution is being podcasted and I am excited uh because we have a special show first and foremost i got my partner in crime harry what's popping you ready to rock and roll i'm absolutely ready man absolutely born ready born ready to, to rock and roll uh ass kickings i'm giving those out those are really? those are happening this yeah is, um, is, I'm, I'm uh, running around uh i'm not being a fool i'm not doing that right no, i'm taking no. names and kicking ass and rocking and rolling that's what i'm doing right, right now fair enough fair enough fair you enough know? uh we got a special guest uh, this is a special show. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, <laughs> but this time I mean it. Um, this dude uh, from from uh, out of Miami, uh, very funny comedian. Uh, he does uh, ABC, NBC, uh, does a, a little show, comedic show, um, only in Dade County, uh, only in Dade, but it's Dade County. Give it up for Carlos, y'all. Give it up for Carlos Hernandez, y'all. Oh, I all doing. Thank you guys for having me. I'm also rolling and rocking, but in the Hispanic way. So that's all. I got it. I got and, it. Um, but I can tone it myself. <laughs> all right. Cool. Cool. Thank, thanks for doing this, man. We've been trying thanks to get you, me, man. trying to get you for a couple of weeks now, and we finally was able, was able to fit us in. So that's that's real dope. Thank um, you. Thank you. What's going on with you? You good? You feel I'm good, man. Chilling, vibing. I just set up this new podcast studio. I'm, I'm recording episodes every week, so just doing the grind, man. Oh, so you knew going. you knew in the podcast game. Get yeah, out! I've done podcasts. <laughs> I know, no, I've done podcasts before. I had another podcast called Doctor Bros with me and another bro. We used to do like we played characters that were doctors, but we would give like broy advice, like oh, dude, she like like shitty, like improv type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But this is just more of like uh, like more of me and just like following that. I do. I do shows every week, and I'm just trying to have comics and as, as big celebrities of Miami here as much. What is your uh, What is your your your, your show? The new show going to be? It's just going to be like interviewing comics or what? Yeah, so it's like a little bit like a late night talk show. So like almost like like a spin on like Jimmy Fallon but, or like the Tonight Show or any of those shows with a little bit like we do like a game at the end of the show, and then I have like a there's like a studio back here where we have like a band and stuff. Okay. So try to do like a modern late night vibe and the uh, dope, 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 dope. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny because I like I get a I, I had a kid hit me up the other day wanted me to do his podcast and he was like, you know, I think he's like two episodes in and I was like, look, why don't you, why don't you let me hit you up? Whenever well, I see that, it's well, you got about fifty <laughs> in because it, yeah. it's weird because everybody is always like they have a real idea of what the idea is and I think the podcasting is a weird thing because what it does is it evolves as you do it. So everybody, right. like, even with us, 
we started out with one, you know, in one way and it has evolved and it continues to evolve. And, and, uh, and I think that's the great thing about podcasting is because you get to deal with your, your audience directly. And, uh, and exactly. the fact that, and everybody also wants it to be, oh, I got to figure this out. I'm going to put some in the tank. I'm, and, and I think even for us, Harry, and you can speak on this, that, um, you know, there's definitely a situation where we, um, I don't know how I could put it. Uh, we're in a situation where we have, uh, it has evolved. It always evolves. It changes yes. in just shifting, like how you approach it and uh, just technical stuff. Now we're doing a lot of it via Zoom. Almost all of it's via Zoom now. Yeah. But aside yeah. from that, just the direction of the show changes a little bit with personnel and also how you approach things because you change in life, too. So yeah. even some of the advice we gave on the earlier podcasts, we amended a little bit, you know, we changed and some of it, which is, you know, some people are afraid to do that because they think yeah. it's going to make you look phony or that right. you're a liar. But in reality is you grow and you change. Human beings change. They evolve, you know, and yeah. so your views on relationship have, have evolved. I mean, I've evolved as a person tremendously from those first episodes as far as, you know, sex and relationship, especially, sure. Sure. you know, so all that changes and then it changes how you the do process. the comedy. Even the process of the of the podcast and all it's like we you always have this idea of what your what your vision is and then when you start doing it doesn't it doesn't work it just doesn't work that way and I and I think the fans what's great about this is the fans get to watch it grow exactly. they get to watch it from I mean I remember episode one or two Harry. Uh, mm -hmm. Echoey is a motherfucker. I mean, yeah, we just had a <laughs> conference room. Yeah, Do dogs barking outside, sirens going by. For real um, natural. Yeah, yeah ambient <laughs> noise like a motherfucker. And, uh, you know, and you learn so much and you, you start learning the importance as to how important sound is. And and then for years, we didn't even we never even did. Uh, we video. didn't do video. How long? How long we've we been doing video now? Huh? Uh, consistently about two years now, almost two years. Yeah, I think actually. Long. Got we would record, but I the problem is it was hard to upload them. We wouldn't upload it always. So we'd have a lot of video, but we wouldn't upload it. But the focus on we, consistently every week for two years so since yeah. the pandemic started, we uploaded. I had time on my hand, so I started making sure we could upload videos every week. Right. Did you guys ever do it, do it like in studio as well? Like before well, I built a there? studio. I had a I have a studio that I actually built, but I'm getting ready to sell this house. Dude, so, nice. you know, we're doing it like you know, a la carte now. So it is. No, that's little, great. Yeah. That's the know, great thing about the pandemic. It taught us that we were able to do a little more. Yeah. And like, now you can travel. Cross those still, bridges and stuff. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's, it's, dude. So we, we, I mean, we would be waiting for you to come into New York to come into the studio. Exactly. Exactly. And, and to be honest, I mean, Harry still likes in the studio because yeah, I, I, I prefer don't get me wrong. I, I, I definitely think that it's a, the energy is different, but I think we've also gotten to the point where we're so comfortable with it now. Uh, it's negligible, you know. Right. It's, if it works, it works. Yeah. 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 So, man, it's so it's dope. Welcome to the podcast. You yeah, know, man, thank you. You know, it's dope, dope, dope. How long you been doing comedy, bro? I've been doing comedy about five to six years. I started doing like improv and sketch comedy in 2017. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, I took like improv classes in 2016, and then acting classes and stuff. And then I got did improv, did the whole thing, taught improv, directed improv. And then I started, I was like, I feel like I got to just do more of my own thing. And then in 20, like at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, that's when I first like started really going. Now, was there, is there a big scene? Because I had some dudes, uh, you, do you know um, Kyle Grooms? I do, of course. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so Kyle came up, Kyle's, Kyle's been in the game a little longer than me, but Kyle was my dude because, you know, Kyle was here doing comedy, you know, um, and that was just, you know, he, but he's all a, a funny dude, but the. the oh, he's great, yeah. Yeah, he's a beast. He's a fucking monster. But the um, you know, it's also that there was a Miami kind of uh, how should I put it? There's a Miami scene, a young scene that yeah, was man. that was kind of coming about now that uh, I didn't know, you know, that was happening a little bit at a time, and and I had some young dudes who were fans of the podcast was listening, listen. They actually was, you know, I get a lot of dudes who were uh super into patrice and when patrice and i used to right. do 
Fucking and they and yeah. they were like, yo, and they flew me out to, to Miami to do a bunch of shows out there, which was dope. Oh, nice. Yeah. What, what, what did yeah. you do? Was that uh, I forget. It was a place. I, it's been a while, but it was a place with a whole bunch of bird cages hanging from a the ceiling. Place with a bunch of, oh, my God, man. I, uh, I think it was Barter and Winwood. They closed yes. that place down. Yes, Barter. Yes. Barter, bro. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yes. I, that's what's one of the first rooms I ever started doing stand up. Yeah, because uh, so, they had a show there every Wednesday, and uh, so the young, that's awesome. young yeah, yeah. dudes. It's a little, it's young because it's kind of funny because the the, the scene is so young. It it's is, like, bro. You got a you got a, a bunch of young dudes who you know they you know I mean youthful youthful uh, cockiness, and you're like, dude, you got to fi- look calm the calm down, bro. Because oh no, no, it's awesome. It's you gotta like once they go out, it's not like the the stand up scene when I started like in 2018 like just stand up alone it was always just like the, the same like heavy hitters that were going up and then like you said a new little generation kind of like started coming up and then one of the one of the people that was that came up in the scene was Marcelo Hernandez who just got like casted on SNL like this week which is freaking insane. oh really yeah. yeah 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 so like he came up with us he came up uh he was doing comedy for a little while he started when he was like 16 so mm-hmm. the fact that we're like growing a little more and more and more every day i you know you see me out in new york i try to go out to la i try to like just expanding yeah. our, our where we yeah, started yeah. from which is just this tiny city of miami where everybody just parties got to be the else on the scope so it's a little bit more than that at this point yeah right <laughs> so you travel a lot how's the how you got a girlfriend or no no i don't have a girlfriend either. i haven't had a girlfriend for about man it's the last time I had a, like a serious relationship. Which was like, it was like four months and it was about last October. So almost mm-hmm. a year since I haven't had a girlfriend. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's not that far. Purpose- off, but- no, purposely so though. I, I don't Why really is that? Me. Because of comedy? Because of comedy. It's like, I'm trying to like get more, um, every year I try to get more and more focused and with all the shit that I have here, like through only and they don't know stuff. Like uh, I, I walk around and people know me in, in the city. So like, I, I, it's a lot of distractions that come my way, like whether it's partying or girls or whatever. And it's, it's like, there was a time there where I was like, okay, this is a lot. And I can't like, I just have to kind of just focus. And if I have one girlfriend, I know it's going to get super messy. And you know, it's um, at the time, yeah. at least at the time, eventually I would, I would, you know, everybody wants to be. Hey, look, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm definitely not judging it, but I, I think what happens too is I think that especially how old are you? I'm turning 27 in uh, so December. You're ba- oh, you're yeah. a baby. <laughs> so it's it's interesting because, um, you know, Harry and I would talk about this a lot. A lot of times guys would be like, yeah, you know, having a girl is so complicated. And I always say it's complicated if 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 it if it's and if it is, it's complicated. And if it's not, it's not. Right. I, I think a lot of times if you um if you're clear about what you what's important to you and what what you want to do and 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 what you're gonna do right I, I you know there's always somebody that'll sign up for that now whether they once they experience what that is like you can talk you can tell somebody yo this is what i do um this is what right. i do this is how it is and they go oh yeah yeah i totally i'm totally i get you you know i'm pursuing my dream too and and a lot of times what I, I think that people, people, women, especially not, and I won't say even women, but women, men, otherwise, anybody who's a legitimate comic, your, your wife or your husband is comedy. Right. And, and everything else is, uh, is secondary. That's right. And, and uh, I, I think when you explain that to somebody, they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. They're like, you yeah, know, I understand. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And then it, it it's have you ever had that situation where you was like, oh, is that why it broke up or, or you know? Uh, well, my first relationship. So I've had I've had three like wrong relationships in my life. And then that's after and why do you um, say wrong, wrong, no, long, 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 oh, long, 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 long. Oh, OK, three long. Well, two long ones and one that was short. lived. What's what's long for you? Three years, uh, okay. three, four years. Yeah. I had a girlfriend. In high school, it was short-lived. That one really didn't last. And then I had a girlfriend that I had a huge crush on when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And then in college, uh, I was like, dude, I was dedicated to get this girl, dedicated to get this girl. And then like, I started, mm-hmm. we started dating. Um, and then we were together for, for quite a while. And then I started taking improv classes in 2016. She saw that I was like putting way more importance into that. And then she like wrote me a letter like towards the end of the relationship. I was like, it's either me or my what you're doing right now because you're like not giving me any time oh she gave you an ultimatum it was either comedy or her 
Yeah. Oh, I, like when I was like, what, 21, 22 years old, um, giving up to ultimatums. And I wonder, then I wonder who gives up the comedy. How many times that's happened where someone's given up their music or comedy? For real. I, I really don't. If, I, and if that is, if the ones that do must really not love it, because I don't think it's that like a passion is a passion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she gave me that. And, yeah, dude, that was that, that was the one. And then the one after that, we both actually were improvisers. And like I met her through the improv theater, the second girlfriend that I, the second long girlfriend that I had. And we were together for three, almost four years. And we were really happy together. But then during the pandemic, like things kind of got like I was trying to just like I was that's where I worked the most as far as like just on myself, on like my comedy and everything and what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I started like doing a bunch of shit. I started like doing things on TikTok, doing things on, on Instagram, trying to like send out audition tapes, even though and I booked like three commercials during the pandemic and I did so much stuff. And then she was like, just like kind of just in bed, like suffering through it, even though she wanted to do kind of what I was doing too. And then me, no, that, that makes it that worse. Dynamic, exactly. So yeah. like that dynamic kind of just like didn't matter. So let me ask you this. Why didn't she... And, and maybe you don't know, but why didn't she take a page out of your book and then, you know, start working on her own shit? I don't know. I think it was more. And she's honestly hilarious. Like she's one of the only like she's she's one of the funniest people I've ever met. Like I, I could see her. She's like a Kristen Wiig type when it comes to like improv and her faces mm-hmm. and everything. She's, she's hilarious. We're still friends to this day. But she just kind of just lost like during the pandemic she's always been a default like hermit crab in the sense that she just kind of like likes to just chill in bed watch Mm -hmm. netflix don't really do anything like i would do stand-up when i was starting stand-up with her and then she didn't do it she didn't she chose not to take it on and i would just be like all right i'm gonna go do stand-up but she'll be like all right i'm gonna just stay home and watch my way now what was that that was a conversation that you guys had like we're both gonna do stand-up she didn't want to do stand-up she just wanted to stick with improv alone just do improv on its own and then when I started expanding that and I was like, I want to also do acting and I got an agent and all this stuff. And I would tell her like, hey, you should try to talk to them and try to send an audition tape. She would always just be like, oh, like lazy about it. And she was like, it's so much work. It's so much this. And I just kind of kept the ball rolling. And then she kind of it's not like she got like um, not into what I was doing, but I was getting not into what she was doing because it was like I've actually been in a relationship similar to that, where the other person was a performer and uh, and had a lot yeah. of talent. And would do well when she uh, would go out and do it, but just didn't have that drive most of the time for some right. reason was dealing with depression or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. there's some there's some issue, whatever she's dealing with. I guess it was more important or, or more intense than the love for the game or whatever. But I've been in that situation exactly. where you're like, what are you waiting around for? And they don't, you know, sometimes they wait for you to do stuff. And it's like that. You can't just wait for me. You have to be your own individual um the other thing i thought was interesting because you you, you're the second guy and i think the other guy uh ironically was marcelo um who i i I don't know him that well but i ran into him in the green room once at the stand and uh i think he too he didn't want to be in a relationship because he was focused on the comedy thing which is good to be focused but the one thing i worry about for dudes like that is that uh when you a lot of people think, all right, my comedy will be ready and then I'll get into a relationship. And then you have zero relationship experience. That's and I true. think yeah. that's a thing that people don't think about. It's good to be idealistic and it's good to be like focused on your career. But a relationship also takes work and experience. And I think we forget that. I think we think of it as I'll just find the right person and you don't have these little things. So what ends up happening is at 35, when you're ready to settle down, you have you don't have that level of experience of dealing with a partner, uh, having someone in your house, dealing, having to balance somebody else's emotions. And that can be uh, true. Yeah, that is true. That is a very good point. Well, it's it's, weird. I, it, it, yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go. Yeah. No, like I've, I've tried, I've, I've, it's not that I've been close to it. Like I've tried, I've attempted like, have, like a relationship after all that happened. Like last year I had like, a girlfriend that was a, a singer and she was like on the voice and she was like all like great and she worked all the time just like me and then like it kind of just fizzled out and it wasn't because of the of a career thing it was more of like uh we both knew we were going too fast and then we slowed down and then we kind of just let it go and then i found out that she was married for 10 years and she and i had no idea and it, that was, was she like, with the guy or she wasn't no no no, no, no. She, was she, was just a, she was like in the middle of a divorce and then she was like uh-huh. to tell me that she was she was she was 29 um uh-huh. But she got married when she was 20 and it was like wow. a whole thing. And then it was like, that yeah. was a whole like bunch of crap. And I was like, fuck, bro. Like when I tried to, and I literally fell in love with her, like super hard, super deep. 
And I was like, this person works as hard as me and they really want to do this. They're going for it. And then just, you know, a lot of other personal shit got in the way. And I was just like, fuck this. Like, I'm not going to like, I tried, I did. And then other things I've tried, I've tried other times and it's always like something weird happens. Like this girl, like straight up after we had sex, like the first time she hit me up the morning after and she was like, Oh, um, she said something like, I just got an STD test and I'm clean. And I also got a pregnancy test and it turns out I'm not pregnant, but would it be weird if I was happy that I was? And I was like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> the fuck a, lot here? Of, a lot of info to <laughs> drop at once. I know. And it was like the third time like we like had like hung out. And it happens that that girl was my high school crush. And I like reconnected oh, really? with her. Not the same girl, not the girlfriend that uh-huh. I met. Like another girl that I was like into and like infatuated. Another girl was right. like, I can get this girl. But this other girl was like, I would like a dream girl that everybody was into. And then mm-hmm. she came to a comedy show randomly. And then the, we hung out. We had like two dates. And after we like hooked up, like she hit me up and I was like, okay, after that one, that's it. I can't fucking, yeah. if I do it, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like fucking abstinence either, but like, you know, like. Well, I, I think, I think what happens is that I think if you really want to find somebody that you match with, you gotta, there's no way around it. You gotta kiss, you gotta kiss a lot of frogs to get the princess. And, uh, and I think that what helps that is, is, you know, there's a level of honesty that you have to have when you go in that where, uh, you know, because it's one thing if you're misleading somebody about what you are and who you are, uh, if you're misleading them and then they go, Hey, you said this, but it's not that it's this. But when they go, Oh, you, yeah, you they go, well, I don't like this. And you spend too much time right. and you're, then you go, yeah, yeah, I told you that. I told you that. And I told totally you, know that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I totally get that. Maybe you had no idea to what extent it was. And I, and I also get that you, you get to change your mind. You know, you, you're allowed to change your mind and go, yeah, yeah. I thought I was good with this and I'm not. And that it's one of the things that I get a lot of times I'll counsel dudes and they'll, you know, they'll be like, yo, I'm in this relationship with this girl. And, you know, I just don't know. And, blah, blah, blah. and then they feel because they, they, because they change or became, because what they want changes or whatever, you know, a guy, like I, I've never heard anybody say um, she's a woman of her word. So it's just, <laughs> you know, it's an interesting thing that the, the expectation's the, not there for whatever reason. It's not a requirement that people look for. Especially in women, it's like you know, you you expect her fickleness, you expect her emotionality, which is weird when you're talking about you know this 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 constant discussion about equality. But I mean. It's it's a really different thing when you when you're talking about how, you know, we, we are different and anybody tells you that they're not. Different. I mean, there's this kind of whitewash or, of of this broad stroking of like, oh, it's just everybody just defined when there are definitely specific things about women that, that and you can make these kind of uh, generalities. Um, I think you can't make them about everybody because there's always exceptions to the rule. But just like there's exceptions to the rules, the, the exceptions are not the rule, you know. Right. Um, so it's like you, you know, it's weird because, I mean, Harry was pushing and there was Harry. Harry wanted certain things, but he was doing improv, too. And he was, you know, doing a lot to, to, to I remember him doing a lot to lift her up, you know, like he was busting his hump to to kind of keep her in the game you know because it's yeah i mean as a man yeah. you want to go ahead Harry, i don't mean to interrupt no you, no but. it's just yeah you're trying to you're trying to you as a i don't know, for me from my perspective i care about the other person i'm with right and so their happiness is connected to my happiness so if there's something wrong with them i'm trying to do my best for them to be better yeah but at some point you you reach a point where you go they don't want to help themselves that's right. Yeah. You know, and you have to tap out and you got to go. It's not all my responsibility to help this person. But the thing is, you get lost in the creativity part it's, or the work part. It's not my job to keep you and up then the, in work. The crazy thing about that yeah. is that she tapped out like the, the yeah. thing. Yeah, I, I was like, Harry was really working to wow. to lift her up. She didn't want to lift up. She want whatever bullshit, whatever shit she was doing on the side or whatever. The, you know, yeah. sketches or whatever, whenever she felt like it or whatever. And then she was the one that tapped out on him when he was so busy trying to trying to lift up. And mm. and one of the things that I realized that, you know, as a man, 
you know, if you have a significant other, you know, you, you're lifting her up or you're making her better is part of your, uh, the definition of manhood. So right, exactly. we're in, you know, so it's like, you know, you know, this is why I say to guys all the time as a man, you have to put your happiness first. Um, and, you know, there's a, you know, we get this happy life, happy wife. But the reality is, is if she's happy, uh, you're not happy. Right. And soon enough, she ain't going to be happy, too, because whatever made her happy in that moment is not going to continue to make her happy. That That's will right. change with the emotion. But as a man, if you have a significant other encompassed in your own happiness is you making her happy. Like as a man, if you have a girlfriend or a, a child or a son or do- whatever, daughter, whatever, or, or just, you know, just a significant other. If your girlfriend is sitting there and she's, you know, pouting and upset and unhappy, then as a man, you genuinely feel like you're a failure. That's you right. know, you feel yeah. like you're failing. Well, you that's can't. How I felt, and, that's how I felt with that girlfriend. Yeah. Too. yeah. Like, I would it's, try to be like, let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, I couldn't get it. Somewhere. It's yeah. weird because you feel like you can't move forward if they're yep. unhappy, you know. Yeah, but what, what, Dante, what would you say to people who would, uh, I guess, be devil's advocate or say the other side that it's unfair to put that on a woman solely, that men do that, too? And what do you how mean that? You, that to say that uh, her happiness changes or that it's. There, it's uh, it's just yeah that their happiness changes, so it doesn't matter. Um, I think what, what happens, makes them happy doesn't matter. I think this ha- I, I happens. I mean, we, we you know statistically we know that eighty percent of all eighty percent of all divorces women file. So it's that's just not true. Like we'll be miserable. We made the decision right, and we'll stick with it because you got to be a man of your word, and so. If we're talking about the 20 percent of men that do file for divorce, still a very small percentage. So when we when you try to act like it's all fair, it's just not it's not fair. Twenty, 80 percent of women file for divorce. Men will stay. They will stay and be miserable because this is the decision that I made and I made my bed. I mean, because we're taught that. In fact, if you're a man and you you made your bed and don't want to sleep in it, as men, we look down on you. I do. What the fuck are you doing? You know, so um, if you're a guy who who is not taking responsibility for his kids or not taking responsibility for his life or his wife's life, he's not bettering in himself. Then we you know, that guy is considered a dirtbag. I mean, and there's no question in that. That's not like. That's not like something we go, well, we don't we agree with that. You know, one of the things that I say, if, um, if we really, you know, you hear guys talk about, oh, this guy, you know, um, what was it? Um, uh, who, who, who got divorced? Jeff Bezos got divorced. His wife Bezos, yeah, got all that fucking, money. Uh, Tiger Woods got, you know, this $50 billion, whatever the fuck it was. But the reality is when the other thing happens, as men, we don't tout that guy. So like one of the guys that I always say, um, you know, if you if you consider winning the game, uh, Kevin Federline, Britney Spears' dude, he won the game, took the kids. He had her playing alimony. He had yeah. he didn't really have. But nobody's walking around with Kevin Federline T-shirts talking about he's my hero. So right. it's you got Chris Rock talking about you know, $50 million. I got to give you $50 million because of you, you or Dr. Dre or whatever. But to the same token, when you, when we see somebody, a living example of somebody who supposedly got the best of the game, we, as men, we look at them as, as pieces of shit. Like we, we don't have any respect for them. And it's, there's a, there's a framing, there's a direct framing of how we perceive manhood and how, you know, how we perceive manhood and how it is overall. And because we perceive manhood in the way that we do, we don't, we don't allow, like, you can't be a dirtbag. And we go, oh, that's, I want to be like that dude. You know what I mean? It just, it it just doesn't. I mean, even when you got a guy and he's got multiple, multiple women, if you, if a guy's got multiple women and the women that he's with are unhappy, other than the fact that they're sharing him, 
we don't even think that's cool. You know, it's like what's cool is the fact that you're a guy and you have multiple women. They all know about it and they're happy and they feel that you're so dope that they're willing to share you. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's when we go, oh, that, that guy is dope. Yeah, so it's a it's a weird kind of I think the standards in the standards, the way in terms of we look at it, we just look at it different. I mean, what women perceive as is, is um, you know, as a win for them is, is I, I think it's just a very kind of emotional thing. And I think that men express that emotion in other ways, just not when it comes to, to that. You know, it's 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 you being a righteous dude who provides and, and, and lifts up his family and feeds his family and whatever and makes his wife happy. That is there's no deviation from that. If you're not doing that, if you don't care how bad your chick is, I don't care what you know, how big the house is. If she's sitting up with a pouty mouth. Right. And she's unhappy. And then you we don't look at that dude as anything. And what's interesting right. is, that I think, changing our mind, we get to change, change our mind also, because the minute a woman decides that she doesn't like you or she's not into it no more, she will dump you with extreme prejudice right. it will, with, with no concern for how you're going to feel about it when you get dumped how you're going to get back to your real self again. It's like, I don't like this. This doesn't feel good. And I'm out. Whereas a guy will be like, ah, oh, you know, I, I, yeah, I can't tell you how many guys, because I do consultations and I can't tell you how many guys tell me, yeah, you know, I broke up with a girl, but I usually just wait till they break up with me. Like I hang out and I hang out and I wait till they, or they might do, they might even sabotage it and do less. And mm. less enthusiastic. Take and- a dive. Take a dive yeah. and stop being active yeah. in the relationship. Yeah. yeah. I kind of did that with like that other that relationship with like my the, the information that I was selling. Kind of yeah. started doing that. And then I realized like I can't do this. Like I yeah. have to either rip the band-aid or it's just gonna keep on. And I, I think what happens also is that women respect you more for doing it. They may not like you more, but they will still have an attraction to you. Whereas right. if you because eventually what she's going to do is she will um, she will be more disrespectful, less sexual, more aggravated. And yeah. then when you put up with it, the more you stay in a situation where you're obviously unhappy, she looks she lo- she looks at you yeah. with a level of disrespect because look, you don't even give a fuck about your happiness. So if you, I'm clearly making you miserable. And I'm not thinking that she, she says that from, on, from a conscious level. But what I'm saying is clearly you're not happy. I'm, and you're putting up with this. I mean, I've even seen situations where got, women have gotten back with a guy, right? Just to destroy him so that she could go and leave him or be disrespectful enough that he puts up with it and then once he has put up with it enough, um, then she'll leave him. So I, one of the things that I say is that a woman only dates you when she thinks you're better than her. Now, better Damn. is a relative term. Like, so people get upset with, you know, especially women like, well, what does that mean better? And I go, I don't know what it's it's whatever you think is better. So but let's be honest. No woman is not she's not dating her equal. She's not dating her. She's not dating her equal and she's not dating somebody beneath her. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean money? Not necessarily. Does it mean that he's interesting? Does it mean that whatever that person, that woman values as important and the way she values, it's about supply and demand. So the way she values something is because she doesn't have it. So I always just tell her, I remember I was like, it's like 1920 and I was dating this older chick. She was like 34. She was a detective. She had a condo. She had a BMW. She had a, you know, like she was traveling, whatever. She, you know, she, you know, she was like the sexy detective lady that wears the badge on her, on her belt buckle with the fitted shirt and the Damn, fat ass. Ran out of like the- law and order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, you know, with the ankle boots, right? The, That's hot as hell. <laughs> and, uh, but I, at the time, I, like, I was a male stripper who was sleeping in my mom's basement on a futon. But yeah. the thing was that I never gave a fuck. Like, like I always felt like I was, it's all going to work out. Like, everything's going to be fine. I'll figure it out. Whereas for her, she had done all the things and she had stocks and bonds and she had the condo and she had all 401k those things, all that but stuff. 401k but she was worried about it falling apart every day wow. and what she thought was better about me was the way that i would approach life and just yo it's, it's gonna be fine you know and she was like well but what about this and what about like rich you, you're making dough you like everything is i'm the one that's sleeping on the futon in my in my mom's basement you know trying to figure it the fuck out. I didn't finish school. I dropped out of school. And, and I was like, yo, I'm going to, I'll find a way to, you know, you know, I was even, I had dudes was like, yo, you want to, you could fight this dude in a basement somewhere for two or three grand. I was like, all right, fuck it out. You know I mean? Insane shit. And there was no security at all, but it wasn't the fact that I had security that made her feel secure. What made her feel secure is that even in the, in the light of me having no security, I felt, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm dope. I'll figure it out. It and was the so, confidence. You, what you had that she didn't have was the confidence uh, yeah. that it would all work out. The, yeah. the not worrying. Yeah, it's a, right. it's an interesting thing. But better is always a relative term. You know, that's always a relative term because people get cut up because what do you mean better? What do you mean? I go, I don't know what. I don't mean anything better. You mean better because if you think about it, what girl goes? I'm better than this dude. But I'm 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 a date him. How long is that before she looks at you and goes, fuck this? Yeah. I can do better. Now, whether or not she can do better is a question, you know, based on age and the sexual marketplace. But um, but the thought is I can do better. I mean, the terminology I'll do bad all by myself is is, you know, that's a popular thing. So it's it's a weird thing. Um, how confidence, um, confidence and, and confidence in yourself that it's all going to be all right is, a, is, a, if a, is an aphrodisiac. So when you say, hey, listen, I'm not happy in this situation. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Now, it may hurt her. She may be hurt by it because of the fact that you're rejecting her. But it is that rejection itself that builds the attraction because now the attraction is that you're unattainable. Right. And, and because you're unattainable, it, 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 the, the subtext of that is that I am, I'm more valuable than you. And she, and if she has any level of insecurity, she's going, uh, wow, he's unattainable because he's, he's better than me. And so the, the pursuant of that is, is in, just to pursue something that you can't have, you know, it's supply and demand. I mean, it's, it's interesting how it even, it even acts that way in the regular marketplace. I mean, we, yep. we pay more for things that are less available to us, you know? So it's a, it's an odd, supply it, it's, an odd yeah. Yeah, it's an odd dynamic. Um, Doug, um, when are you coming to the city? I'm supposed to be there uh, first or second week of October. So, okay. All right. Yeah, in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Dope, man. I'm gonna definitely see you when you get out there. Uh, when you get out down here, um, the um, I'm supposed. I, I would suppose that you're gonna do some uh, some uh, Kim shows as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ideally, I'll, I'll do that. I'll, um, either New York Comedy Club or the St. Thomas Club as well. The, the dope, dope. At the V spot. That's why I've seen you uh, uh, a few times that I've been. Oh yeah, yeah. Over there. yeah. Oh, cool, cool, you're cool. Crushing yeah. over there. I love. Oh, that, thanks, man. man. I have yeah. fun, man. I've been. I've been just trying to stay interested. I've been trying to stay interested in what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, of course. That's, that's and, half the battle of doing this stuff. So I mean, you get to the point where you there's a certain level of proficiency. And then you know you can go on stage and do well. And then you're like, well, why am I doing like why am why do I keep why do I keep going up crushing with the same material that I know crushes? So it it forces you to be artistically to artistically push a little more. And I think there's a, there's an, you know, you talk about women and there's an attractiveness in that to women, like, you know, that you're willing to, you know, walk that tightrope. Right. 
you know, where other people, other other comics and other people are not, you know, right. if, if you're sitting in the audience, you know, um, they know that you, you know, they, they can tell you're on the high wire, you know, right. They can tell you're on the high wire and there's something it's, it's, it's really, it's really kind of weird because we are so visual as men, we're so visual. So look, yeah, you, you could, you could walk the tight, tight rope all you want. But if you Whoopi Goldberg and you walk in, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Like it's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I mean, yeah. a dope chick, a, 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 a smoking chick who is dope, who I also is walking the tight road. I'm, I'm all about that. But it's man, I, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. And then I, that's what keeps me going. So, you know, I'm always trying to keep myself interested. Um, plug yeah. your, uh, your podcast and stuff. Yeah, um, man. Uh, I'm having, like I said, it's a podcast. It's like a late night type of vibe, but it's also it's it's based it's a regular podcast based on interviews I host. I also do like it's like an intro segment where I'm on my own and then I bring in a, a guest. We have some fun. It's called Carlos Live. You can find it on Spotify, Apple Music. Starting next week, we just recorded the first three episodes, and we're going to just mm-hmm. drop them weekly. So yeah, and whatever, and follow me on Instagram at c a r a c a h r l o s Carlos with an H in the middle. Follow mm-hmm. me on that on TikTok and on Twitter. I'm on the same thing. And uh, yeah, man, thank you guys for having me. I'm, I feel like yeah, I, I um, took and a if you need any, if you need any, you know, any advice on equipment or podcast equipment, Harry oh, and I, I are both that. here. You know, you can, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll hit you with the number, or you can get it from Kim or whatever. And you know, yeah, please do. I mean, we got a lot of years of doing this to to kind of figure it out. Harry, talk to me, baby. Hey, if anybody needs relationship consultations, you could hit me up via email uh, advice from Harry at Gmail dot com. And we can set up. I'll give you the rates and we can set up a a uh, consultation about sex uh, advice, relationship advice, life advice, anything you need help with. uh, I'm there for you. Uh, You know, um, you know, when I say Google me, bitch. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a hell, man. Yeah, it was behind the Kardashian. (laughs) Yeah, we called the we called the breakup two weeks before the breakup, too. Like, I was like, it's only a matter of time, though. That for real, yeah. Well, it because well, for the same reason, you know, women love you for the same reason why they dump you. So, uh, so Pete's uh, honesty and his genuineness, which he's a very honest and genuine dude, um, is what got him in. I mean, like, imagine you're a chick and you're dealing with Kanye and he's like, I'm a, I'm a voice of a generation. And then Pete Davidson comes up and says, hey, you know, you want to go for some ice cream? Like right. really <laughs> simple, right? It's right. simple. It's honest. It's straightforward. It's innocent. And she goes, wow, what a what a breath of fresh air not having to listen to this fucking asshole. Right. (laughs) Talk about how he is. But she's also as much. I mean, whatever you want to say about her as a as a, you know, a hoe or whatever, a man eater or whatever. She she loves them kids. And so the kids were important to her. And. And a woman wants to know that if she if the kids are important as a man, that you understand her maternal energy and that you are willing to stand by for that. So when she was thinking about her kids and stuff, all he really needed to do was say, listen, hey, if you need some time, you know, like whatever, or if you need help from me, I'm totally down with it. But such and such. And what he did was he proposed to her which shows a level of insecurity because he was trying to hold on to her, you know? So the proposal, even if the po- po- if the proposal was there when they were laying in bed being goofy and, and looking at Kanye's tweets, that would have been fine. But it was the timing of the fact of that the she proposal. was like, I, she's like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, my family's important. And he was like, let's get married. And, and that is, that screams insecure. insecure. And... Crazy. You know, she's a man eater. I mean, she's ran through motherfuckers better, you know, some beasts. She's yeah. ran through motherfuckers. So, I mean, she's, she, you know, she literally cut the dick off of uh, the voice of a generation. So, soon as he, uh, 
As soon as he did that, I was like, yeah, it's, it's done. When he, yeah, I didn't even realize brand, that he proposed. That's crazy. When he yeah. branded himself. Yeah. When I was like, oh, it's done. It's done. Who, who does it? Like, you're, you're bugging. You like me too much. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing. You can never show that you like someone too much. It's like that. You can't. I you mean, you to. can. You can as long as you're saying, I like you a lot. And I like you a lot. But not Not as much as I like I, me. That's yeah, right. I, and that's like I like you, but I will. I don't. I like you, and I also don't give a fuck about you if you're not on my program. And I think that's important. Um, but you can check out sure. Google me. Check out my consultations. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can get me. Talk to me. I'll help you out with whatever you need to do. I've been doing this shit for a long time. Nothing that I haven't heard. Um, also, um, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. Our Patreon is www.patreon.com slash manschool202. I hear this all the time. I get messages all the time. Dude saying, yo, you changed my life. Yo, help. If you if you think we changed your life, you like what we're doing, man, support us, man, so we can keep doing it. And that's um, where we I'm, do all the bonus content. So we're going to, after this show, when you're done, you can go over to Patreon every week. We do a bonus episode, and we're going to answer some listener mail. Mm. That's where we do the bonus coverage, patreon.com slash manschool202. Yo, love y'all. We out.